my brother and sister technically, but that's my boyfriend and I'm his girlfriend, so. So what's good, homies? It's your man, Dr. BOA. You know, sometimes relationships can be confusing. They can be amusing. They can be enthusing. They can be a bunch of things. But in some relationships, you feel like you're just losing. But then there are other relationships that should never take place at all. And one of those relationships involves two people being related in any way, even distant cousins, even second, third cousins. Yes, there was a time in biblical history where that was done by a particular man, but the world was much more scarcely populated. We're talking about since the creation of these laws and statutes and commandments that we follow in the alpha sphere. But here's a situation where a boy and girlfriend almost look like twins. They literally look like fraternal twins. Here's the image of them right here. Now, these two look related. You can tell they're related in a strong way. But the strength of that relation is going to blow your mind. Because as a young man, he should not be with this. And I'm absolutely positive that if the father was involved in this scenario, he would not be OK with it. Because it's foul. Very foul. The type of things that means your children are going to be mongoloids. They're going to have some types of issues because the bloodline is not just closely related. The bloodline is almost the same. Let's just to this video, man. We'll come back and chop it up on a real tip. And um, if you're sensitive, this is not going to be a nice one for you. Let's take a listen. So a lot of y'all been in the comments saying that me and you look alike. We look alike because we both have the same dad, but we have different moms. But it's, it doesn't really matter because, you know, we wasn't raised with each other. We don't, you know, we didn't know each other. So, yeah, we are brother and sister technically, but that's my boyfriend and I'm his girlfriend. So. Now, what you hear, first of all, is the female doing all of the talking, which lets you know that this has taken place. Because in order to put yourself in this situation, you have to suppress your own testosterone. You have to suppress your masculinity and follow the lead, the emotional lead of the woman. So she's doing all of the talking because this was her idea. She's leading in this fiasco. And this is one of those things, man, that just imagine if this was you, if your father, these were your children. Imagine if this was you. And this is your daughter who shares the same father with you. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's a little bit less for me anyway. It's a little bit less significant if they share the same mother but different fathers. I'm just I'm from the old school where the father's bloodline is the chief bloodline. Now, I don't know where we got in this society where the mother's bloodline has suddenly become the chief bloodline and the father doesn't really matter. I know it has something to do with the absence of the father in the household, but in truth, the bloodline of the father, you can tell when two children don't have the same father. You can't tell when they don't have the same mother as readily. So in this scenario, standing from my perspective, this is even extra foul. It is more foul because they share a father. This is prototypical following your desires and your pleasure seeking capacity because there's nothing you could do to justify this. It would be totally different even if they didn't look alike, but they look like fraternal twins. This looks like his sister. She looks, he looks like her brother. It is such an embarrassing thing, man, because, you know, it always has to be someone black who does something like this and then publicizes it. If this is your life, why even put this out on TikTok like this? Why try to normalize this type of activity? Why try to tell people that this is OK? And we live in a society where adults, grown folk follow young folks now. 
I grew up in an environment where we always look to the OGs. We always got our wisdom from those older than us. We always had a level of respect and reverence for those older than us. Now you have a, a society where older folks who should be the wise leaders are now following the trends and the outlooks of the younger folks. So these young people can unfortunately affect the way even older people view this scenario because everybody wants to normalize their foul behavior in this society. We live in a society where everybody wants to normalize their behavior. And if you champion proper behavior, like we champion proper masculinity here, we, we champion the proper relationship dynamic over here. We champion proper gender roles over here. Like we are old school in our outlook and they tell us, take that on back to the 50s. Why take that back to the 50 when I can bring the 50 to the 2020s? That's what I'm going to do. And in an environment like that, these types of things wouldn't go on. See, everybody wants things to not be like they used to be, but you can't just pick the one aspect of life that you want to not be like that. You can't say, I just want relationships to be different. I want the dynamic between men and women in relationships to be different. And then turn around and say that you want everything else to stay the same because yes, we do need that type of guidance and structure. But the problem is that type of guidance and structure came from the structure of the household, came from the structure of the intimate relationship between a man and his wife. Now that you have decided that you don't want that intimate structure anymore between a man and his woman, this is the downfall of that. This is the outpour of that. This is the result, the consequence, the repercussion of that. So own it. Except the fact that this is what you people in this society want. You champion the freedom to be who you want to be, to do what you want to do, to live the life you want to live. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. And if you say anything negative about anyone, then you're some type of phobe. So I guess what I am now, what am I? What am I now? A family lover phobe. What am I? An incestuous phobe. What am I? What am I afraid of now? I want you to tell me what I'm afraid of because I don't champion this type of behavior. We live in a society where no matter who does what, if you speak negatively of it, you're afraid of it. Or there's going to be some type of cancel culture going on. Why? The people who speak right should not be counseled. The activities that they're speaking on should be counseled. But we live in an environment where everybody wants to let everybody do what they want to do so they in turn can do what it is they want to do. We live in an environment that lacks morality. It lacks traditional outlooks. It lacks righteousness. And it lacks a common desire for the betterment of your fellow man. Nobody wants you to be better. They just want you to find pleasure. They want you to be happy right now. No one thinks about future happiness. No one thinks about what's going to become of you tomorrow. After you're done having fun today, wasting your younger years having fun, what's going to come of you 20 years ago? You understand? I'm on here, man. I do this right here, man, to talk to the young brother. Cause I'm going to be honest with you. I'm in my 40s now, man. If you're in your 20s, boy, you got a long way to go to even be in a position where you want to live life still. You know how many people ain't going to make it to where I'm at? Some of y'all listening right now, unfortunately, ain't going to make it. Male and female. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I say these things, man, so you can try to wrap your mind around a concept that having some type of morality and righteousness is how you navigate this. You have to make adjustments in your life as you mature. And some of these things just should never be done. Like for me, this right here, man, no matter what kind of desire I had for this woman, I just wouldn't cross this line. At some point, you have to allow your reason and logic to lead you as a man. So even if this woman wanted this as a young man, you have to have some type of tie to your reason, logic and understanding to say, no, we can't do that. We can't be together. I have to represent my father. I can't represent your feelings. I have to represent my father's legacy. I have to represent my father's name. I have to represent my father's reputation. And when you see a situation like this, you know that the last thing on this man's mind was doing anything other than catering to the desire of this woman. Now, granted, it begs to be said that not having your father around hurts you as a man. And having somebody else's father step in and try to play father for you isn't the same thing. 
there's a spiritual aspect of having your father around that can't be recreated with another man. Now you can have some guidance. You can have some leadership. You can be taught some manly things to do, some masculine things to do. You can be taught to be responsible. You can be taught a lot of things by stepdad, but you cannot be taught to be the best version of yourself because the spiritual connection that's there with your biological father isn't going to be there with another man who steps in and plays the role. So you could be a good guy, but you're never going to reach your full potential. And what we see is a young man right here who is already showing and proving that he's never going to reach his full potential because even at this young age, he is allowing himself to be led down the path of self-destruction by a woman, by his feelings for a woman, which are governed by her feelings or perceived feelings for him. This is a travesty. Totally foul situation. And I want you young men to understand that there are going to be times where you're tempted to do the wrong thing. But doing the wrong thing is never going to give you the benefit, never going to give you the pleasure, never going to give you the long term success that doing the right thing will. The wrong thing may give you pleasure today. But the right thing will give you peace for years to come. And as you get older and mature and you start to get your money right and your mind right and your body right and your spirit right, you start to realize that building that peace right now is going to mean more to you than whatever money you have. Because at a certain point, you just you get used to having money. But I'm going to be honest with you. Boy, you never forget about having peace because the only place you can control peace is in your own private domain. Once you step into the world, you're at the mercy of the unpeaceful tendencies of the world outside. Now, you can still be a peaceful man and approach it, but that doesn't make it peaceful out there. So never bring this type of negative energy into your life by being led by the part of you that only seeks pleasure, momentary pleasure, physical pleasure. Y'all comment down below and let me know what you think about this topic, man. I look forward to hearing what you men have to say. I'm out. Trying to become the most alpha version of you. Trying to become the most alpha version of you. Striving to become the most alpha version of you. Fighting to become the most alpha version of you. Welcome to the alpha sphere. Get money division. The place where you transform into a man on a mission.